Montacute House is an Elizabethan mansion built of Ham Hill stone and an amazing amount of glass that echoes very strongly Hardwick Hall, built by the exceptionally wealthy Bess of Hardwick and completed just as Montacute was started. Now, to modernise, it's difficult to understand where the man who built Montacute found the money. He was the fourth and youngest son of a Somerset County gentleman who became an MP for various seats in the south of England at a time when there were no elections and MPs were chosen by the aristocracy and only attended Parliament when the monarch wanted them to pass some new laws. But MPs still had influence, of course, and their presence in the heart of government allowed them to line themselves up for other great and profitable offices, especially if they had additional skills. And Edward Phillips Phelps trained as a lawyer and came to royal notice under Queen Elizabeth. Shortly after her death, he was appointed a King's Sergeant at Law by James I and took part in the trial of Sir Walter Raleigh. By this time, Montacute was already completed, but um, Phillips continued to thrive with multiple profitable public officers boosting his income. He was not only one of those appointed to examine the gunpowder plotters, he was Chancellor to the Prince of Wales, Master of the Rolls, organiser of a royal wedding, Speaker of the House of Commons and Ranger of all, all royal forests, parks and chases in England. And besides his house in Chancery Lane in London and another at Wanstead in Essex where he entertained the King, there was of course Montacute. He seems to be the sort of summer palace only used to entertain guests from London or impress the Somerset gentry. And perhaps that explains why Montacute re survived relatively unchanged. Phelps was uh, operating in a Jacobean court where the physically unprepossessing, cowardly and ruinously extravagant James I neglected government business in order to go hunting, drank far too much, was unmistakably Scottish, which was pretty much a sin in English eyes, and selected some of his favourite courtiers because they were physically attractive. But if anyone objected to his sexuality or behaviour, there was absolutely nothing they could do about it. James was legally above criticism of any kind, and that criticism would have been classed as sedition and firmly suppressed with the aid of lawyers like Sir Edward Phelps. Montacute House is built on a hill that housed a Mott and Bailey castle in early Norman times and then a Cluniac priory until Henry VIII ordered most of the monastic buildings destroyed in 1539 and the land was later sold to the Phelps family. The only change to the house once it was built was made a few years after Sir Edward's death by a later Sir Edward Phillips who remodelled the West Front, but did so installing most of an entire facade bought from another Tudor Renaissance house that was being demolished. Subsequent generations settled down in Somerset to live the lives of, uh, lives of country gentry, representing the county in Parliament, and nothing so exciting as our Jacobean builder of Montacute. But eventually, as is far from unusual amongst the landed gently, gentry, there came the uh, dissolute rake who destroyed the family inheritance. Sir William, a high Victorian known as the gambling squire for his addiction and eventually uh, locked away for it, is once said to have bet on which of two flies would crawl down a window pane fastest. He lost the bet and many others and had to sell the family silver to pay for his daughter Marjorie's season in London. Tragic. Uh, the uh, Phillips family had to leave Montacute in 1911 
finally running out of money and having sold off big lumps of the estate. And in 1915, Lord Curzon brought the property, but it was put up for sale about 15 years later. There were no takers, and two years later, the property was being valued for scrap at around just under £6,000. But Ernest Cook, the grandson of Thomas Cook, the, uh, the travel man, persuaded the Society for the Protection of Ancient Buildings to purchase Montacute and grant it to the National Trust. It was one of the Trust's first great houses. Briefly, during the Second World War, Montacute was requisitioned by the Army and American soldiers were billeted in the surrounding parkland before the Normandy landings. And those gardens and the park still have their own fascination with a sunken parterre off to one side, an orangery and a rather neat walled garden with small turret buildings on what is now the main western frontage of the house. The house was turned around when that new Tudor frontage was added, giving room for a corridor linking the main rooms, something which uh, didn't exist in the original design. And Montacute, unlike some great houses, doesn't sit isolated in its parkland. There are still plenty of open vistas around the house, but it's on the edge of a pretty Somerset village which has frequently been used as a film set, uh, as has the house itself. It's still sparsely furnished with items from the Tudor period from other homes, but Montacute is well, also one of those National Trust properties playing host to paintings from our National Galleries, the National Portrait Gallery in this instance, and that seems particularly appropriate in this exceptionally well-lit open space where we can look back at the um, histories that produced houses like this. <laughs>